in the previous video, I spoke about something I saw and something I heard that led me to believe that Mikey Garcia was going to win the fight on Saturday night. And well, what I saw should be on the screen right about now. And it, Adrian Broner was on weight, but at the time it looked like he, he went about making weight the wrong way to get to that point, to get, to get on weight. So in the picture that should be on the screen now, uh, he doesn't look well in the picture. And, and so who knows? I mean, right before camp, if you, I don't know, are you drinking? Who knows where, whatever else. Um, if you spend more of your camp making weight instead of on training and strategy, this is what you, uh, this is, this is how you look. I mean, unless of course the cameras are around, then you're doing some things that look like you're, you're training for the fight. But I think when you're actually attempting to make weight, maybe you're not doing it the right way. So you weren't training in Colorado up there with Terrence Crawford so you could be more focused you were up there in the high altitude to try to better cut weight in my opinion which leads me to what I heard that's what I saw which lead me to what I heard and what I heard came from the man himself Mr. I'm going to return to the can man for this fight with Mikey Garcia. Yeah, right. M maybe you're the con man and not the can man. Um, during the lead, during the uh, lead up to the fight, Adrian Broner said that making weight for the Garcia fight wouldn't be a problem, and he added that he didn't make weight in the past for fights with uh, Ashley Theophane, uh, Eloy Perez, uh, Vicente Escobedo, Adrian Granados. Um, I'm not sure if it was uh, the left-handed kid he fought too, whose name is slipping me. Uh, DeMarco, I'm not sure if he was over weight in that one, but he he said he didn't make weight for all those guys because he didn't have to. And he said he did it on purpose. Broner said that he's smarter than what people think because if he wasn't going to get penalized for missing weight, then why should he make it? it? You know, it gave him a bigger advantage. And when I heard that, that, that pretty much solidified my pick for Mikey Garcia. The reason is that this is clearly an issue of character. A boxer who has character isn't gonna do that. I mean, if it happens once to a guy, a fighter, and his body kind of tells him that he can't make the weight anymore, that's one thing. But when there's a pattern to it, to me, it becomes a very revealing sign of what your character is as a boxer. And Adrian Broner has no character as a boxer. And, and as a result, you see what happens. Now, uh, everyone seems to always make excuses for Adrian Broner. Um, he's got problems outside of boxing, outside the ring. I mean, like, who doesn't? Um, 
He was weight drained. But he told Jim Gray he wasn't tired. And it's true, he wasn't. Um, so tired wasn't the problem. Problem, something going on outside of boxing. I mean, come on, man. You had that stuff going on when you were winning. So, I'm not buying that. Um, he wasn't focused. But wasn't the big story coming into this fight is that you went to Colorado to get away from from Cincy and from Washington DC distractions. Oh, he's being sued by this woman. I mean, excuse after excuse. No, let me give you the real excuse. I'm gonna give you the real, real deal Holyfield excuse. Adrian Broner just ain't that dude. Um, he's not that guy. But he's fooled a lot of people into believing that he's that guy because of some things he did at the lower weight classes. I'm here to tell you, Adrian Broner is a sucker MC. And one factor that made him who he was at the lower weights is that the guy would rehydrate to like 20 pounds heavier than his opponents were on fight night and he could walk those guys down I mean I'm not making an excuse he made the weight and he won those fights but that's how he made his name I mean he's two three weight classes above guys on fight night and uh But then you start trying to pick on guys your own size and you see what happens. Listen, I see talent there with Adrian Broner. No question. But I also see a guy who arguably suffered his sixth loss, his sixth loss on Saturday night, arguably. Um, and we can talk about those six losses if you want. The record book has three. I've seen five, possibly six. Let's talk about the fight. In the first round, you can clearly see that Adrian Broner's speed is an issue, early on at least, which we talked about in our uh, previous video, the prediction. But while he kept flicking the jab in the first round, he didn't do anything. And, and I'm looking at my notes that I took as I watched the fight. Um, I thought Mikey scored with a nice right in the middle of the round that got Broner's attention. And Mikey also landed a nice body shot to take the first round on my card. Uh, round two <clears throat> saw Mikey Garcia close the distance a bit and his jab pretty much controlled the round. Um, Broner is giving some movement, but it's actually running. This, this is what he's doing. He's fast walking backwards to the corner then the other corner and it, it's running. He's on his bike. Um, Garcia threw a wicked right hand to the body toward the end of the round and uh, Mikey was backing Broner up 2-0 Garcia so round 3 nice hook in the first minute um, minute oh I'm sorry nice hook big hook with a minute and a half left by uh, Garcia and then a right hand followed um, AB threw a hook that was extremely awkward. I mean, it was kind of on the run. I've never seen him do that. I've never seen anyone do it. He was in trouble. And if Mikey would have been 
uh, had his reflexes and, and, and been in the right position, um, I think that, that would have been a shot that caught Adrian and might have did some serious dam damage. If you take a look at round three, he, he threw a hook. <clears throat> and I guess it was about a minute and a half left. And he threw a right hand shortly after. And then Broner kind of went on a run. And he, as he was running, he threw this awkward hook just to, like, get off of me, get away from me. But it was at, like, the worst angle I've ever seen Broner attempt to throw such a punch. And um, it was a bad look. Uh, and then Garcia punctuated the round with a, a right hand, left hook to the body, double jab, and a left hook to the jaw. And my notes say that uh, Mikey was beginning to get into a rhythm and Broner was beginning to be Broner and getting outworked. So I had it 3-0 for Garcia. Uh, in the fourth, I liked Adrian Broner's jab to the body and he kind of stood in, in the box. Um, he landed also a nice counter right hand a little later AB did and then a nice short lead right with slightly over a minute left in the round however in the last 30 seconds of that round I thought Mikey Garcia landed some solid head shots including a nice uppercut and a body shot a couple body shots that got Broner's attention in the fifth I thought Adrian Broner did some good work uh, he threw a nice lead hook very nice counter hook at about a minute and a half or so. Um, I couldn't look at the clock and to, to, uh, it's kind of like when I saw the shot I would kind of type or write what I saw and then looked at the clock so it may have been before the minute and a half mark or it may have been after. Um, but, but you get the idea. Um, Mikey started to tee off on Broner's body and head. It was a closer round I gave it to Garcia because the beginning to get into that mid-range that we talked about in the previous video. Um, some nice jabs to the body to open the sixth round. Adrian Broner's flat-footed and getting beat to the punch. Nice uppercut and power jab by Broner, but Mikey once again start teeing off on him with activity. In the seventh, very nice one-two by AB to start the round. Big power jab. Um, and then body punches begin to take the gas out of AB. And, and in the prediction video we talked about, I like to see somebody decide to go to the body and see if they can uh, be effective. And I, I thought for sure it would be Broner. Um, a little bit more on that later. He tried. But uh, Garcia, big com big combination in the seventh round, a looping right hand by Garcia to end the round. And uh, to the eighth, nice counter right hand by Adrian Broner over Garcia's jab. And then he landed a nice counter shot later on in the round. But once again, Mikey start taking the gas out of him. It, and toward... I guess the back half of the round, I don't know if it's something AB said or did to kind of light a fire under Mikey, but Mikey kind of stepped out of character. He started walking toward Broner with his hands down and said, all right, come on, come on. And uh, he started to walk Broner down. Now, AB landed two low blows um, after that near the end of the round and uh they I think they they had an effect in the ninth round I like the counter right hands uh that Adrian Broner landed in the middle of the round but there were no follow-up shots then AB landed two very low blows that kind of turned around uh, in his favor. And I'm surprised Harvey Doc, the referee, missed them. Uh, listen, 
one thing I've never shared. I shared. Um, I have Harvey Doc rated as the best referee in boxing, at least in my opinion. I just, I just think he's consistent. He doesn't have any uh, cold phrases. Let's get it on, or what I say, you must obey, or what he, he or um, I'm fair but I'm firm. He, he doesn't make the fight about him like other referees does. Harvey Doc shows up. And if none of you remember anything that the referee did in the fight on Saturday night, then that's my point. He let the guys fight. He stepped in when he had to. And he just does a solid job. Tall, slim, Snoop Dogg looking <laughs> built guy. Uh, Harvey Doc, I, I think he's one of the best. I think he's the best right now if I had to rate guys. Uh, the only thing I've questioned about Doc, I guess in the few past few years, was that um, Peter Quillen, Daniel Jacobs stoppage. But when I look at it again, I, eh, I kind of think, <laughs> I don't think Quillen had much <laughs> much of a complaint. And even Daniel Jacobs said that some fans think it's, as a matter, as a matter of fact, he mentioned it, that some fans think it could have been premature but I like Harvey Doc nevertheless um, funny thing happened in, in the ninth round Mikey started punching and as he's throwing a, 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 like a, a jab and a hook Broner's yelling at him like alright now give me the right hand <laughs> and Mikey threw the right hand and landed it <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. You got to listen close. He was like, "All right, now give me the right hand," and he <laughs> he threw it through Broner's guard. It was kind of funny. Um, in the tenth round, Broner started using that forearm, and he got results. Um, he landed a hook, nice hook, that buzzed Mikey Garcia, and then he followed it with a right hand. Um, Mikey threw a hard body shot to kind of try to answer it. But while Broner started to walk Mikey down in the 10th, as, as Mikey started to backpedal, it was ineffective aggressiveness for two-thirds of that round. Um, Mikey was doing extremely well off his back foot in the 10th round. Broner did good work, but on the back foot, Mikey Garcia threw 91 punches. Mikey was on the back foot for most of the round as A.B. walked him down and he still threw 91 punches. Now, and then I put a note in there and said that uh, in between rounds, Broner can't find the range in fights that he loses. If he can't find the range, he doesn't punch, which is kind of the right thing for a boxer to do. But then you have to be able to get back into range and claim your territory. And Mikey, for the most part, took advantage by not letting Broner do that. Uh, when Broner did, he had opportunities. But whenever he got off, Mikey retaliated to let him know who was boss. Mikey... Garcia was scoring and very active in the 11th round. He's been kind of, what I, my note said he's been kind of blowing through his nose since early in the fight and now blood began to come. If you look at somewhere in the first few rounds, as Mikey's walking to the corner, he's kind of like, kind of like blowing like the snot out of his nose, his nostrils. And so both guys looked a little tired. But my notes say Adrian just wasn't active enough. Mikey landed, Mikey threw, I should say, 93 punches that round to 29 for Adrian. Adrian's corner has been yelling at him, and he's not, not producing. Uh, the 12th round was great because Broner landed hard, but he didn't go for it. He didn't go for it enough. Um, he did it as best he could, but Adrian takes like a hop step. And if you move, 
he doesn't go get you. He kind of just hops and hops over to you. And that's just not a style. That that It, it just doesn't work. So the scores were um, Eric Marlinski had it 117-111. Steve Weisfeld and Don Ackerman had it 116-112. Now, it was hard for me to find I scored at 118. One it was hard for me to find four rounds to give to Adrian Broner, Ackerman, Weisfeld. Uh, I'm not sure, especially a couple of the later rounds they scored. I'm like, Mikey Garcia's punch output is going up <laughs> in these final three rounds. It's, it's crazy. So um, here's some comments. Adrian Broner said that it was a Tom and Jerry fight and I had to catch the mouse. Whatever, dude. You were on your back foot most of the night. Keep it real. At the end of the day, I'm still AB. I'm still about billions. I'm still the can man. If he wants to rematch in California, we can do it. At the end of the day, I'm still a four-time world champion at four different weight classes, and I'll still be in the history books. <sighs> Mikey Garcia, this is definitely one of my best performances ever. I think I controlled the fight in the early rounds and I kept the activity up. Broner's a great fighter who has great skills. I was a superior fighter tonight. It was timing. It was the timing. I've always said I had very good timing. It is underestimated when you're outside the ring, but once you get inside the ring with me, I'm a step ahead. Uh, in our pre-fight video, we talked about his timing and his accuracy and his uh, his distance. Uh, we trained for we trained for 10 weeks. We had a great training camp and great sparring. We knew it was going to be a tough fight, so we had to be in great shape. It was part of the strategy. Ooh, did I say that? <laughs> We try that again. It was part of the strategy to be a little busier than the fights I previously had. And, and that's the book on Adrian Broner. You can outwork him. Paulie Malinaji, a guy who punches about as hard as a one-year-old, outworked Adrian Broner in the majority of the rounds. If you like Broner in that fight, I'm not going to argue with you, but he outworked him. In, in the majority of the rounds when they fought. Anybody that wants to come join us on Showtime, give us a call. We are ready for anybody. Uh, I think that might have been a, a, a uh, revealing statement there for Mikey. The Showtime piece of it. Uh, maybe I'll go down to 135, stay at 140, or go up to 147. That's what he said. and. I love how he toyed with the media in the boxing world by saying that. Maybe I'll go to 135, 140, or go up to 147. Stay at 140, or go up to 147. Um, basically, his answer is like to Jim Gray is like, none of your business, Jim Gray, and the rest of the world. You have to wait and see what I'm going to do next, but expect something great. And you know what? I believe him. Unlike Broner, who was all about, this is AB. I'm training in Colorado. I'm going to fuck you up. Every time, every time you turn around, I'm going to F you up. I'm going to F, oh, I'm going to F him up. Yeah, man. Same thing was said to Paulie. Same thing to Sean Porter and his father. Same thing to Marcos Maidana. Not to mention the fight you had with Fernando Quintero and Daniel Ponce de Leon that I thought you lost also. But it's just the weirdest thing. Um, uh, AB, he walks around with this motto that he's a a four-time champion in four weight classes, but he's putting up 
slightly better than average material in the ring. And it kind of makes you wonder about this era of boxing. Like, dude, you realistically, realistically, you probably have six losses. And uh, Mikey threw 783 punches. Adrian Broner threw 400 punches. Mikey Garcia landed about 119, I believe, more punches than Adrian Broner. So what's next? Well, for Mikey Garcia, he has options. Um, it could be moving down to 135 pounds for a, a real nice matchup with Jorge Linares. Um, there's Vasily Lomachenko out there, but politics might prevent that from happening. There's uh, Robert Easter Jr., which uh, would be an interesting fight for him. Um, as he said, he could stay at 40. You got the uh, Ndongo Crawford winner. Even though if it's Crawford, politics could block it. Um, at 147, maybe a Keith Thurman. And I'm going to tell you something right here. I take Mikey Garcia in that one and would give a full breakdown why I would take him over Keith Thurman. A full breakdown. And guess what? I'd probably take him by stoppage. And I have my reasons. What's next for AB? For Broner, it, it's much more complicated. Um, coming up, Adrian Broner was always carefully matched. Um, he never took on that guy in the lower weight classes. He took on the more beatable champions. I'm not going to take anything away from him. That's, that's how the game works. He was always carefully matched, but now extra caution needs to be taken with him. I don't think he can beat a Thurman, a Spence Jr., or even a Danny Garcia. So 47 seems to be out. At 40, I don't think his chances are good against Terrence Crawford. Be honest, I'm not even sure he can beat a, a Rancis Bartholomew or a Felix Diaz Jr. Um, now, Sergey Lipinitz needs to step up, but if I'm not mistaken, Lipinitz has a potential title shot, which I don't think he would throw away for Adrian Broner. Too, too, uh, too much of a risk. Um, if, I mean, if you're chasing a title, if you're online to get it, go after it. Uh, remember back in the day when we wanted Broner to go to the UK to face Ricky Burns this was when he was in a lower weight class and even though we thought Broner could go over there and take him in the lighter weight classes you gotta ask yourself does today's shop worn Ricky Burns push Adrian Broner to the limit I mean listen it's a legitimate question um I got one for you. How about AB versus AB? You got Adrian Broner versus Andre Berto. They have to be careful with um, Adrian Broner right now. I think there's some guys a little lower. Um, I might have to get I might have to get back on that one uh, at 140 for Adrian Broner it, <laughs> it might be in his best interest to do a catch weight if there's nothing at 40 that they feel he can beat then go ahead and don't go to 47 <clears throat> Um, I 
think he already beat, let's see, beat John Molina Jr. Boy, I don't know. Maybe Ricky Burns in, in, in uh, Ohio. Um, Humberto Soto. See, I, when I look at Soto, even though Broner should beat him, Soto is another, like, he's a guy that's going to come at him with some volume. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh, Maybe a Maurice Hooker. I think he can take Hooker. I don't know. Um, they're gonna have to move uh, Brona carefully after this one. The co-feature: Jamal Charlo versus Jorge Sebastian Hayland. Um, Charlo won by TKO at uh, 2 minutes 13 seconds of round 4 listen Halen was clearly injured coming into the fight and um, it, <laughs> he was damaged goods I don't want to use the word setup but you gotta wonder <laughs> did those uh Guys that put the mafia hit on Gutierrez, <laughs> they caused the um, <laughs> the Frampton fight to be uh, canceled. Did, did they same guys put a hit on Halen? I don't know. Um, Charlo, I felt good at the weight. I was in good shape all camp. I just had to keep my composure in the ring. That's always something I have to work on, and I was able to do it. After I dropped him the first time, they said he fell on top of his ankle. That's just part of the boxing game. I had to just stay consistent and get the work done. I want the belt next. Now, I'm going to look at the words or the word belt, singular, no S. I want the belt next. Now, this is Premier Boxing. He's a, he's a Premier guy. And the only things that you can win if you beat Golovkin or Alvarez, the winner of that fight, are belts with an S, B-E-L-T-S, not a belt, not the belt. So is that quietly hinting that you're aiming for the winner of Billy Joke Saunders and Willie Monroe Jr.? That would give you the belt or a belt. So we'll see. And then you called yourself Vernon Forrest reincarnated and the new Sugar Ray Leonard and the real Tommy Hearns. Well, Jamal, let me just say this. Hearns, Hagler, Leonard would have taken that one-legged opponent out in one round, maybe two. You are the real Tommy Hearns. Um, okay. So there were 12,084 fans in attendance. And if you believe the house wasn't papered up, I got a sparring partner for sale that AB claimed he knocked out while preparing for the Garcia fight. All yours. Um, we let you know early on that the tickets were flexed down for this fight. Ringside seats were $950, which were inappropriately priced. Shout out to uh, Ticket Connoisseur, Ticket Agent, Jim Boone. Um, if you listen to him when he told you to buy late, then you probably got a deal of the century on floor seats. So, I mean, they, 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 they slashed big time. And I'm sure some tickets were even given away. 
Early in the day, as I mentioned, Carl Frampton versus a uh, Gutierrez fight was canceled when Gutierrez had that freak accident in the shower. Or maybe, as I stated, that mafia hit that Frampton put out on him. <laughs> uh, if you see Frampton hanging around Charlotte, then you know... Uh, <laughs> You know, you know what, what the deal was, but that's just two weird situations here. Um, there should be a picture on it. If I didn't put it on already, there should be a picture of, of Gutierrez's uh, injury on your screen now. If I didn't show it already, and uh, <laughs> that's weird. It's, it, what's even more weird is if you go back to my previous video and I talked about um, if I talked about Halen's style I said he's he's going to go some rounds with Charlo because he he had this work rate and this style that reminded me and I didn't even know he was from Argentina but it reminded me of Sergio Martinez and I thought he was going to be busy enough to make it a fight but then when I saw the way <laughs> that leg oh man goodness also in Brooklyn Jarrell big and I mean big baby Miller defeated Gerald El Gallo Negro Washington that means black rooster by the way Miller won the fight by Eighth round stoppage. <sighs> That's how I feel about that slow pace fight. <laughs> um, the six foot six Washington weighed in on Friday at 245 pounds and was still outweighed by 53 pounds as. Oh my gosh, Baby Miller came in at 298 pounds, man. Now, when I watch this fight, I understand that people want Deontay Wilder versus Baby Miller because Jarrell Miller is on the, the, a prime Antonio Tarver or Shannon Briggs level of trash talk. But this cat needs to get in better shape. And he better avoid punches than he has. Uh, better than he has if he wants a payday with Deontay Wilder. Because, I'm sorry, he should avoid punchers. Got, like, if he's not going to get the Deontay Wilder fight right away, which I don't believe, they better not put him in with somebody who can hit. Because I'm telling you, he may not get that Wilder fight. And Showtime, the broadcast team especially, I mean, they want a Wilder versus Miller fight so bad that I think they begin to become cheerlead, cheerleaders of, of everything that this kid did against Washington, I say after like the third or fourth round. Personally, I agree with Robert Perez and John Stewart's cards, which had the fight close. Uh, one had the fight two rounds by two points for um, uh, by two points for Miller and another judge had this had it even at the time of the stoppage. Gerald Washington is one. He's just another one of those muscular guys whose stamina starts to betray him after about four or five rounds. Um, I sent a tweet to Washington asking him if he knew that he was down by only two points on one card and was the score was even on another card. Would he have viewed the stoppage a little differently? So, don't know if he's going to respond. Um, Golden Boy on ESPN card came on. And uh, I tell you what, Saddam Ali still can't avoid that right hand. 
his trainer Andre Rogier is going to get him killed. And uh, Sunday night, the, the clown prince of boxing, Victor Ortiz, uh, he returned with a victory. And Victor let me down. Not anything he did boxing-wise. He, he won. But usually Victor will say or do something that just has me, just, just makes me roll on the floor laughing. And he did neither. He did neither on Sunday. So. I guess I can congratulate him for that, but man. Um, I got a funny video of him right before he fought his his last fight with um uh, the second fight with Andre Berto. He got interviewed before the fight and he was singing. I'm gonna find that video and burn it, put it on YouTube. Uh, just that piece where he's singing I'll put it like at the beginning of one of my one of my next videos but <laughs> that guy is <laughs> uh, boy I tell you he's a misfit um, that's it that's it busy weekend make sure you check um, what we got we got Vasily Lomachenko versus uh, Mariaga and I'm interested to know if after the fight is over, will ESPN give the coverage like they did with Manny Pacquiao? And then in two weeks from then, we'll have um, the unification. First, unif first time we'll have a unified champion barring a draw uh, in about... Uh, 10, about 12, 13 years. That's the uh, Terrence Crawford, Julius Ndongo on ESPN also. So, uh, you guys make sure you um, stay tuned. And we catch you on the next one.